Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we will continue with the basic anatomical structures, and this time we will discuss vessels and glands. The objectives of this lecture is to identify the major types of blood vessels, namely arteries and veins, how to differentiate between them, and how to study them anatomically. Then we will see the clinical importance of lymph and the lymphatic circulation. And finally, we will identify the anatomical types of glands. So, starting with vessels, vessels are tubular structures that are responsible for distributing substances throughout the body. تيوبات موجودة بكل أنحاء الجسم توزع مواد معينة according to these substances شنو هي المادة اللي موجودة ببطن الفيسل it's either blood or lymph so we divide vessels into blood vessels and lymphatic vessels blood vessels include arteries شرائين veins أوردة and capillaries الأوعية الدموية الشعرية أو الشعيرات الدموية Lymphatic vessels are divided into afferent and efferent وها رح نشوفها بعدين قبل لا ندخل بتعريف ال arteries and veins رح ناخد فكرة عن ال blood circulation The center of the blood circulation is the heart القلب It is the pump that pumps the blood throughout the body The right side of the heart receives the oxygen poor blood or the deoxygenated blood from all over the body It pumps it to the lungs, where there will be gaseous exchange in the lungs. oxygen, and it returns as an oxygen-rich blood to the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart is responsible for pumping the oxygen-rich blood to all the body, to the tissues. The definition of artery or vein depends on the direction of blood flow in the blood vessel. Regardless of the type of blood inside the vessel. Meaning what? Any blood vessel that carries the blood from the heart towards the tissue, away from the heart, this blood vessel is called an artery. On the other hand, any blood vessel that carries blood from the tissue back to the heart, it going to, it's going towards the heart, this vessel is called a vein. Regardless of the type of blood inside the vessel, so it can have the blood oxygen rich or oxygen poor. The blood vessel, this is an artery, this is called a pulmonary artery. It is an artery because it's going from the heart towards the lung, so it's going away from the heart. But the blood inside it, because it's coming from the right side, the blood is oxygen poor. oxygen P. And this blood vessel, after oxygenation, is going back to the heart, so it is a vein. This is the pulmonary vein. But the, uh, the blood inside it is oxygen rich. It is oxygenated. So we do not depend on the type of blood when we define an artery or vein. We depend on the direction of blood flow. So, to see the differences between arteries and veins, because arteries arise from the heart, they begin from the heart, they begin large in size. And as they run through the body, they start giving branches. Just like the tree. And every time they give a branch, they become smaller in size. معناته diameter مالته القطر مالته يقل كل ما ينطي أفرع. diameter So they start as large sized arteries, medium sized and then small sized, and they keep branching and rebranching and rebranching until the diameter becomes less than 0.1 millimeter. واحد بالعشرة من المليمتر. إحنا أنا منسمي artery شريان بينما يسمى arteriole شريان. When it comes below 0.1 millimeter. Arterioles also keep branching until they break up into a network of capillaries. In the end of the arterioles, at the level of the tissue, they will break up into 
كابيلاري نتورك اللي هو النوع الثاني من الأوعية the capillaries الأوعية الدموية الشعرية capillaries are microscopic vessels they cannot be seen by the naked eye because their diameter is only 7 to 9 micrometer والمايكرومتر هو واحد من الألف من المليمتر بعدي ما تنشاف بنعين المجردة they run between the cells يعني هنا تكون أكو خلية وهنا خلية هنا خلية هي تمشي بين الخلايا Their walls are very, very thin, composed of one cell only. So they allow exchange of substances between the blood inside them and the cells. هنا أنا راح يصير تبادل للمواد بين البلد وبين الخلايا. They will give blood oxygen. They will give the cells of one. They will give the cells oxygen. They will give them nutrients, مواد غذائية. They will receive the CO2 from the cells, ثاني أكسيد الكربون. And waste products, chemical waste products. أي فضلات تنتج من خلايا مثلاً يوريا, كرياتينين, يوريك أسيد. أي كلها فضلات من خلايا تأخذها. And then the venous side of the circulation begins. ورا مسار هذا التبادل راح يبدي البلد يرجع مرة ثانية للهارت. Because we are going back to the heart, هنا نختلف the direction. So we are starting on the venous side. فلاحظ إنه veins they begin small unlike arteries. Arteries بدها تشبيرة وصغيرة. The veins تبدي بمستوى التشيو. They begin as small venules. والvenule الوريد هو يقابل the artery. Also less than 0.1 milliliter, a millimeter. كل the capillaries تتحد تكبر تحول إلى venule. The venules أيضا تتحد. They will form small then medium sized and finally large veins so as the vein runs through the body it will receive tributaries just like a river until eventually all the veins will become large veins that will drain the blood back to the right side of the heart How does blood flow through the blood vessels, through the arteries and the veins? The wall of the artery. The walls of the arteries are thick, elastic, and they have a thick layer of smooth muscles. The smooth muscles are موجودة بالartery wire. These smooth muscles can contract and uh, result in what is known as pulsation, nubbles. So as the smooth muscles contract, they will push the blood forward away from the heart towards the tissue in the veins the walls are thin and elastic but the, there is very little smooth muscles these smooth muscles are unable to push the blood back to the heart so how do veins empty back to the heart if they may be hanabled high veins the blood heart حتى ترجع البلد إلى الحارت وهذا اللي نسميه venous emptying How does venous emptying happen? The most or the central factor in the venous emptying is the heart itself The pump The heart is a pump مضخة مثل ما دا يضخ دم من الجهة اليسار بالشرائين لازم بالمقابل يسحب دم من الجهة اليمين من الأوردة So as it pushes through the arteries it will draw or suck blood from the right side so they depend firstly on the pumping action of the heart this is enough for veins above the level of the heart فوق مستوى الهارت مثلا in the head or in the neck or in the upper limb فوق مستوى القلب the blood from these regions depend on the pumping action of the heart and on gravity على الجاذبية gravity will pull the blood downward towards the heart المشكلة وين تطلع عندي The problem is below the level of the heart For example in the lower part of the thorax In the abdomen on the low, In the lower limbs Here the gravity wants to pull the blood downwards الجاذبية تريد ترجع الدم إلى الأسفل إحنا نريد نصعده إلى الحارت So veins will depend in two, on two additional factors عندنا عاملا أخرى تعتمد عليها veins below the level of the heart The most powerful and the most important is the contraction of surrounding skeletal muscles. 
هذا الفين ده يمشي وهو محاط بالسكيليتال مسلز when the skeletal muscles contract they will press on the vein and push the blood upwards then once the contraction of the skeletal muscle ended the blood could return backwards by the effect of gravity so the veins below the level of the heart are provided with these structures these are called valves samamat Valves allow the blood to go in one direction. Anyhow, once it tries to go back, they will close. So they are one-way doorways that allow the direction of blood to go only in one direction. They prevent the retrograde blood flow. تجاه المعاكس هذا نسمي retrograde flow. So below the level of the heart, venous emptying depends on the pumping action of the heart, the contraction of the surrounding skeletal muscles, and the presence of valves inside the veins. Let's turn to a point important in the arteries. The veins were here the presence of communication between the blood vessels. With the malahad na bistura ule, no hud at the level of the capillaries or the arterioles or even the larger arteries there are. There is communication between adjacent arteries. If an acute jihadal arteries at the level of the arteries, most arteries in the body, most not all, adjacent arteries, يعني الشرايين القريبة من بعض, they are connected to each other by communicating channels. هذه الشرايين المتقاربة أكو بينات هواصلات. This Structure this communication between adjacent arteries is known as anastomosis. تشابك الشريان. And this is important. If we suppose that this artery is blocked, هذا الشريان هنا أنا كاتب لك ليجتشر عقد نام من برا. أو هو نسد من الداخل صار بيتخفر مثلا أو تجلط. هل هذا يعني إنه هاي القطعة من التش اللي هو يزودها هذا الشريان هي راح تموت؟ No. In the presence of anastomosis, blood will flow from this artery into the rest of this artery and reach the tissue. So tissue, the tissue will not die. This direction of blood flow from one artery to another is known as a collateral circulation. دورة دموية ساندة. إذا سد واحد ممكن أكو طريق آخر alternative route for the blood supply. As I said in the first, most of the arteries of the body have anastomosis, not all of them. Some arteries, a few arteries, are not connected at all. And look at this, this artery is with this part of the tissue, this artery is with this part of the tissue, there are no between them, no communication. If we said this artery, this tissue will not reach out to oxygen or nutrients, so the tissue will die. These arteries are called anatomical end arteries. They have dead end. يعني إذا سد هذا بعد خلاص نسد الطريق. There is no overlap of the supply area. The anastomosing arteries are mostly present around joints. هاي arteries اللي أكو بيناتها communication دائما موجودة حول ال joints. هنا أنا مثال هذا هو the shoulder blade, the scapula لو حلكتف. This is the shoulder joint, and you can see how the arteries are communicating with each other freely. هذا السبب بسيط فرضا أنا نمت على ظهري وصار ضغط على هاي المنطقة كلها سدت هذه الأرتري فهل هذا معناته هاي تيشوس كلها راح تموت لا راح يصير أكو alternative route alternative pathway for blood from other tissues. Anatomical end arteries. An example of anatomical end arteries is the renal artery, شريان الكلية. لاحظ هنا شريان الكلية ده ينقسم إلى عدة فروع. And there is no communication whatsoever between these branches. So if this artery, for example, becomes blocked, this area which is supplied by this artery will die and has to be removed. The third type of communication between arteries it's, it's between this and this there is a communication between the two arteries but if you look at the communicating channel 
it is much smaller than the anastomosing arteries I1. number two the supply tissue requires a lot of blood هذا الأورجان أو التشيو اللي رايح للأرتري هو بطبيعته يحتاج دم هواية. so if the supplying artery becomes blocked, the anastomosing channel is not enough to supply the high demanding tissue, and this will also result in tissue death. وهنا أيضا راح يموت التشيو لأنه ما راح يوصل له كمية دم كافية كمية الدم الواصلة قليلة. This type of communication, which is not enough in the arteries, these arteries we call them functional end arteries. End arteries because the result is the same, the tissue will die. Functional because there is a communication. Here is a communication, communication, but this communication is not enough. An example of these arteries is the coronary arteries, the shrayin tajia, malat al qalb al heart. لاحظ هنا أنا أكو تشابك هواية بين هذه الأرتيز بس هذا التشابك صغير والهارت بحد ذاته هو كتشي هو يتطلب هاي ديماند أو بلاد فما راح يكفي فلهذا تصير عندنا الجلطات والذبحات اللي تصير بعضلات القلب so according to the communication between arteries we have either anastomosing arteries which are the most common we have the anatomical end arteries, there is no communication whatsoever. Or functional end arteries, there is a communication, but this communication is not enough. Nasadi Teraki Mojuda even on the venous side, between the veins, we also have communicating channels. But Bijihatil veins men samiha anastomosis and samiha venous plexus what to dim nafsil al tariq akhar had this drainage of blood from the tissue. Now, anatomically, how to study arteries and veins? خلنا نتفق على شيء واحد بالبداية إنه كل الأرتيز والفينز اللي بالجسم هي عبارة عن تيوب واحد. It is one long tube. The beginning of the artery is from the heart and it spreads throughout the body. The beginning of the vein will access to from the tissue and it goes back to the heart. For descriptive reasons, to make it easy for us to study arteries and veins, we take this long tube and we divide it into sections. So, كل section راح نطي اسم. For example, this artery from here to here it is called subclavian artery. From here to here, it is called axillary artery. From here to here, it is called brachial artery. هو صون دا واحدة بس إحنا تشريحيا قسمنا إلى أجزاء. So every artery will have a starting point. فرضا نأخذ هذا axillary artery. It starts from here, from the level of this bone, to here, to the level of this bone, and it has an ending point. Between these two points. It has to run in a certain direction. How the direction is a me course. So when I the edge of this artery, I go. This artery begins at point A, and it ends at point B. It runs vertically, inferiorly. The also of here is the course. It now goes in the direction of the edge, inferiorly in the direction of the asphalt, because this is the direction of blood flow. Now, now it's after course. During its course, it will give branches. فأبدي أعدد هاي branches. Some of the branches may be named. ننطيها أسماء. تكون كبيرة ومهمة سريريا. فننطيها أسماء. Some of the branches are unnamed. ما إلها أسماء. إذا عرفنا نقطة البداية ونقطة النهاية للأرتري الكورس مالته والبرانشز هي النقاط الأربعة المهمة. ماكو داعي إنه نروح نحفظ نفس التفاصيل بالفين كل اللي راح نسويه هو مجرد نعكس اتجاه جريان الدم لأنه هو هذا أساس التعريف. So the starting point of the vein is the ending point of the artery. في the edge of this vein راح أقول إنه the starting point of this vein is point B while the ending point is point A. And the course is also opposite. If the can have the descending vertically inferiorly, يعني ده يهبط 
باتجاه عمودي إلى الأسفل This will be ascending vertically superiorly ده يصعد إلى الأعلى And usually the same branches that the artery gives هي نفسها راح تكون tributaries للفين مثل ما هذا ينطي branch هنا نفرع هذا راح يستقبل مقابلة رافد عادة يحمل نفس الاسم عادة مو دائما كل البرانشز راح تكون لها مقابل tributaries so for any artery or any vein احنا عادة نبدي دائما بالارتري ونطبق العكس على الفين we have a starting point an ending point a course between and a number of branches Now we come to the second part of this lecture, which is the lymph and the lymphatic vessels. First, we have to define what is lymph. Before we start with lymph, we return to the tissue level at the level of the capillary network. This is an arteriole. هذا نفتح على capillary network وهذا الفينيو. The capillaries are running between the cells, exchanging the products. The blood pressure inside the capillaries is high. يكون عالي ضغط الدم داخل الكابيلاريز so there will be filtration of blood راح يتفلتر الدم and it will lose some of the fluid towards the tissue راح يطلع جزء من السائل اللي هو البلازما مالة الدم راح يخرج إلى التشو and this fluid will swim between the cells The space between the cells is called the interstitial space or intercellular space. لاحظوا كلمة enter, the prefix enter means between, between the cells. So once the this fluid is filtrated from the capillaries to the interstitial space, هذا الفلويد راح نسميه interstitial fluid or intercellular fluid. This fluid will also react with the cells. It will wash the cells. It will take the waste products or any foreign bodies or any microbes that are lying between the cells. Then it will enter these tubes. تلاحظون هاي التيوبات الصفر, the vessels. These are blind tubes. يعني blind tubes يعني مفتوحة من جهة واحدة وهي جهة التشي. It will enter these tubes. These tubes are the lymphatic vessels. Once the interstitial fluid is inside the lymphatic vessel, we call it lymph. هو نفس السائل داخل البلاط كان بلازما. من طلع بين الخلايا صار اسمه interstitial fluid. من لم ال الوصاخة مالت ال interstitial space ودخل إلى ال lymphatic vessel صار اسمه lymph. So lymph. The origin of lymph is from the blood. بعدين تحول إلى interstitial fluid. بعدين صار lymph. There is a rule in physiology or anatomy: any fluid in the body must always circulate. دائما لازم يدور ما يبقى بمكانه. سواء blood أو lymph أو زائر نخاع شوكي whatever. So the lymph will also have to circulate. Because lymph originally came from blood, it has to be returned back to blood. And lymph is always returned to veins. دائما يرجع إلى veins ما يروح إلى arteries, namely the large veins of the neck. All the lymph of the body is returned to the large veins of the neck. وراها يفوت ينخبط ويا الدم يمشي ويا الدم وترجع الفلتريشن مرة ثانية وتكتمل الدورة بس بما انه قلنا هذا اللمف هو dirty interstitial fluid ما يصير نرجع الى البلد هو بعد dirty فلازم يتنظف خلال الدوران مالته it must be clean so it has to pass through these checkpoints هاي السيطرات These checkpoints are called lymph nodes. الغدد اللمفاوية. Each lymph vessel, each lymphatic vessel, must pass at least at least through one lymph node, and most of them pass through several. تمر عد خلال عدة غدد لمفاوية. The lymphatic blood vessel, which brings the lymph to the lymph node. 
هذا الليمفاتيك فيسل اللي احنا نسميه وارد ده يورد لنا الليمف الى الليمف نود This is called afferent lymphatic vessel that brings the lymph. ورا ما تنظف اللمف داخل اللمف نود, the lymphatic vessel that takes the lymph away from the lymph node, هذا الصادر. This is called efferent lymphatic vessel. The difference is the A and E. Afferent, وارد. Efferent, صادر. Now, afferent and efferent are relative نسبيه. Depending on which lymph node are you talking about? Now, I'm going to have two lymph nodes, lymph node 1 and lymph node 2. Let's take this vessel, for example. This vessel, for lymph node 1, it is efferent, but for lymph node 2, it is afferent. So we have to know which lymph node, when we say afferent or efferent, we have to uh, determine which lymph node we are talking about and lymph nodes are usually aggregated in groups if we look at this picture lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes are present all over the body but they are usually aggregated or accumulated متجمعة, at the entrance and exit areas of the regions remember the body regions are the head Neck, upper limb, thorax, abdomen, and lower limb. Let's take a look at the upper limb, for example. This area is called the axilla, the armpit, al-ubut. This is considered the entrance and exit area of the upper limb. Here, المدخل والمخرج مال upper limb. So lymph nodes, هاي الدعابل دا تشوفوها كلها. These are lymph nodes. Are aggregated here. They are. Accumulated here, متجمعه بالأجزلة ونسميها axillary lymph nodes. Here at the lower limb, this area is called the groin, our inguinal region, المغبن, and we see that the lymph nodes of the lower limb are accumulated here. فكل اللمف اللي طالع من lower limb أو هنا طالع من upper limb لازم يمر على هاي اللمف نود because we said that all the lymph of the body will be returned to the large veins of the neck through these duct signs and we have the right and left lymphatic ducts كله راح يرجع إلى الفينس فقبل لا يوصل إلى النك لازم يمر من خلال اللمف نود it is very important to know the afferent and efferent pathway for each lymph node group why? Lymph is the dirty interstitial fluid. When the lymph is so dirty, the lymph nodes cannot cope enough. They will enlarge in size. Normally, the lymph nodes are impalpable. Impalpable, yani they cannot be felt through the skin. Normally, yes, I mean, either mash it on your body, or I'll leave it in the boot, or I'll move it. I'm not going to feel this dirtiness, which is the lymph nodes, because the lymph is clean. What time do you feel these lymph nodes? We can feel them; they become palpable when they are enlarged. What time do you feel them? When the lymph is so dirty, lymph can become so dirty in two conditions: one, infection. إذا عندي التهاب مايكروبي داخل التشيو to cancer if there are cancerous cells cancerous cells you like to spread throughout the body تحب تنتشر بالجسم واحدة من طرق انتشارها هو من خلال lymphatic circulation من توصل إلى اللمف نود سواء هاي المايكروبس اللي مسوية infection أو cancer cells they will be trapped here راح تلزمها السيطرة Trapping more and more and more, for a thicker lymph node and becomes palpable. <coughs> so if I know the afferent area of this lymph node, for other than I need to find the lymph nodes that are present in the axilla, they are six or seven groups. I get one of them, Cabrana. If I know the lymph node, then they are here. I mean the afferent area, so I can identify the source of the disease. I can. Identify the source of the disease if I know the afferent pathway. High amniotic afferent. 
The front شنو أهميته؟ عادة the front كل lymph node راح تطي إلى lymph node أخرى. If this lymph node becomes so enlarged, ما تقدر تكبر أكثر من هيك راح يبقى lymph dirty وراح يوصل إلى هاي lymph node فهذه بالتالي راح تكبر على مدى الوقت. So I can follow the progress of the disease or the stage of the disease. إذا هو بالبداية راح تكون فقط هاي كبرانة أما إذا الموضوع متأخر ممكن تكون هاي الثانية كبرانة والثالثة كبرانة واحدة تبدي تنطي الأخرى When lymph nodes are enlarged مثل ما نلاحظ بهاي الصورة An enlarged lymph node This is a condition called lymph adenopathy هنا أنا هذه المريضة This is the neck of the patient تلاحظون هنا أنا أكون تفاخ هنا أنا مو فقط palpable It is visible صارت واضحة أيضا تنشاف بالعين المجردة أكون تفاخ For example this patient may have tonsillitis التهاب اللوزتين اللي هو إحنا بعامية نقول التهاب البلاعيم التهاب البلاعيم هو شون بكتيريا قاعدة بالبلاعيم ده تصير معركة بينها وبين دفاعات الجسم وخلايا تتقطع وخلايا تموت و و dirty tissue fluid كله راح يصير dirty lymph هذا كله راح ينزل إلى هاي lymph nodes so this lymph node becomes enlarged it can be felt and can be sometimes be seen this is called lymph adenopathy because I know this lymph node receives lymph from the tonsils داخل من اللوزتين فأنا رأسا من يجيني مريض وأشوف هاي الكبران عندها راح أروح أفحص اللوزتين ما راح أروح أفحص الأذن مثلا أو أفحص الشولدر لأنه أعرف أنه هذا الليمف هذا الأفرنت إيريا مالته مصدر مالته هو التونسوس اللوزتين وبهذا راح ينطيني إلى لينف نود أخرى جواها وبعدين إلى لينف نود أخرى جواها فإذا لقيت هاي بس واحدة يعني هذا بالبداية إذا ثلاثة هنكبرانات so the stage of the disease is, has progressed or there is a severe infection العدوى كلش قوية The last part of our lecture is talking about glands. So what are glands? Glands are structures that are derived from epithelial tissue. هي تراكيب مشتقة من النسيج الطلائي. And you know that epithelial tissue covers the outer surface and inner surface of the body. تغطي سطح الجسم اللي هو skin هذا epithelial tissue. وتغطي تجاويف الجسم اللي هو ميوكس ممبرين غشاء المخاطي هذا أيضا epithelial tissue so whether they are derived from the surface or the cavities of the body as long as they are derived from epithelial tissue I say meha glands glands are divided into two types according to their relation with the epithelial tissue حسب علاقتها بهذا epithelial tissue اللي اشتقت من عدة If they return their connection with the epithelial tissue through a duct, بقت متصلة ويا هذا epithelial tissue عن طريق قناة. These glands are called exocrine glands. الخلايا الإفرازية. وهال الغدد الإفرازية عفواً الغدد الإفرازية. وهذه الغدد راح تفرز إفرازات مالتها. إما إلى تجويف الجسم أو إلى سطح الجسم حسب هي من يا طبقة الأصل مالتها. This is an example of exocrine glands. These are called salivary glands. الغدد اللعابية الثلاثة. لاحظونه كل واحدة عندها duct قناة. And they will all secrete their secretions into the cavity of the body, which is the mouth. راح تفرز الإفراز مالتها اللي هو اللعاب داخل تجويف الجسم داخل تجويف الفم. Another example is the sweat glands. الغدد العرقية هذه موجودة على سطح الجسم. قنواتها كلها تفتح على سطح الجسم وتفرز الإفراز مالتها اللي هو العرق على الجلد. If the glands lose their connection with the epithelial tissue, ما كبينها بين epithelial tissue connection, meaning they have no ducts. These are called endocrine glands. الغدد الصماء. The secretions of these glands are special chemicals called hormones. فرازات مالتها إلها اسم نسميها hormones. وين تروح هذا زين؟ شلون تفرز الإفرازات مالتها؟ These glands are usually surrounded by a rich network of capillaries. محاطة بشبكة كلش كثيفة من 
الاوعيه الدمويه الشعريه and they secrete their secretions their hormones directly into the blood مباشره الى مجرى الدم وتفتر الهرمونز بالجسم and they cause their effects so glands that have ducts are exocrine glands the ones that secrete their hormones directly into the blood are endocrine glands and an example of endocrine gland is shown here this example is the thyroid gland الغده الدرقيه at the end of this lecture you have an exercise to test knowledge and I'll see you in the lab to discuss this exercise.